I do have some nerve, you fucking worthless immigrant piece of shit, telling me that I have problems. You know, your father, own father kicked you out of this friggin' house because you grabbed Tirella by the neck and dragged her downstairs and then physically attacked him on the way out. You're lucky to all of these CF hunters that he wanted to. Your parents hate you because you're such a piece of shit. You're abusive and neglectful of your daughter, keep her on out of her head. Because you know, because you've had her in your custody all this time and all you've done is nothing but fucking feed her french fries and ignore her all day, keep her in a baby jail, and bless her until she's two years old because you don't wanna you don't wanna feed her so that we should stop so she won't stop sucking on your fucking kids, you fucking freak. And you're telling me that I'm an infant I'm been there because I went to jail and I used to you know, you know whatever you think you know, okay? Prove it. But anyway, you have another thing not to do where you're saying, okay, we have an attorney Right. Option two is uh, require mom to relocate to Charlotte, uh, keep um, primary custody with her, and then set up a schedule for dad. Three, uh, mom can stay in Colorado, but the child's coming back here and will reside primarily with dad and work out a schedule for mom. Are there any other options? How about this one? Um, well, within that third one, or within the second one, give mom the option of uh, sort of say this, you can stay in Colorado, but the child's coming back here. If you decide to come back here, then this will be the schedule. That's sort of number two, but. I would like to be heard on Okay, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, Judge, I respectfully, I think you can make mom move. You know, I, I can force her to move up by just saying, you know, by, the, by making the child move. And right. she's, I've done that before, and then they just naturally follow. The, the only thing I can, I can say is she's made it at least clear to me that because of the company that, uh, subcontracts the work in Colorado or in that time zone, it seemed like the place to move. But one thing I wanted the court to consider is she was actually living in Section 8 housing here in Charlotte. Um, well, She's always been poor. I'm not going to go... Well, I'm, she I, can and be I'm, poor and I'm not going there, Judge. I just, I just wanted the court to recollect right. the pictures right. and the difference of the quality of life that she is providing right. for her in Colorado versus here. I was not making comment otherwise because I know that everybody has to do what they have to do and I'm certainly not here to judge. I just, if you compare the standard of living that she did have here versus what she can afford there, um, it, it is certainly, she can offer much more to her um, than she could offer here. Um, the other thing is, Judge, that, you know, he, he did move to Charlotte. He moved outside of Charlotte. Um, he hasn't been in the child's life on a, on a steady basis, and I know part of that is my client's fault, so I'm not, I'm not sitting here pretending that she did not... But a lot of that was his own knuckleheadedness. Well, that judge and, and the fact that there was no resources, financial resources. The, the order was entered. She was responsible. I agree that it was a long move. It's a, it's a long drive. It's a long flight. It's expensive. She is offering... Her daughter something more or their daughter something more than what she was able to offer her here but we're talking six years she, she didn't receive a dime in child support either so you know judge I, I'm not sure that just simply saying you know she's never going to comply with the order when in fact there may be some child support coming and she's made it very clear to me that she did that the child support could all go for the transportation that, that she's more than willing to make that happen 
Um, she just hadn't been able to afford it because she's been doing this all by herself. Um, and, and so, yes, there have been some hiccups, uh, but I think she understands the gravity of this. And, 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 and again, I, I just I believe she has offered her daughter uh, or their daughter something a little better than what Charlotte had to offer. That's not to say that's all Charlotte has to offer. But certainly the pictures, uh, you know, spoke for themselves and, and the place in the area and the school that she's in is uh, certainly quite beautiful. So uh, that would be my argument, Judge. And, and she obviously has roots now in Colorado, and I'm speaking to the little girl. I mean, she, she has a, a counselor, she, she has a teacher, she, she has classmates, and yes, there's been some of some issues towards the end of the school year, Judge, but, but they started to sort of immerse themselves in helping this young lady um, and, and my client. And, you know, now all of a sudden we're talking about possibly changing that all over again. Um, and, and I'm just not sure what, if any, effects it would have, but I would argue to the court that, um, you know, the longer time we have to work with someone, the more we accomplish. So I, I would ask the court to consider option one. I'm going, to, I'm going to make you come back. The order will be if she, the child coming back here, if she says, I'm coming with them, then she, she'll she still have primary custody. So, as a practical matter, the child is here. So, how long does mom have before we enroll her in school? She starts school. 22nd. The 22nd. The 22nd. Ms. Blaine, if you'll do an order with all this. I wish I could talk to you every day. that you have asked, you've been told that.